God is constantly keeping us guessing, isn't he? Do you like surprises? <laughs> you, you may have had a different answer if I had asked you six months ago. Do you like surprises? But now we're like, you know what? No, I, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good on surprises until 2032. I'm good on surprises, but you're going to be surprised about some things when you get to heaven. One thing you're going to be surprised about maybe is who is your neighbor in heaven next door in the condominium, and you might be surprised who has a bigger house than you in heaven. You know, who God really used on earth will not always be whose name we knew. And even on earth, Jesus was he was full of surprises. I like that the disciples were surprised because it lets me know that it's okay that sometimes I get caught off guard. Because I thought God was going to do this, and, and then he does that. And I thought my life was going to look like this, and then it looks like that. And I thought this person was always going to be my friend, but I didn't know they were going to kind of stab me in the back and go take what I tried to give them and do something else with it. But, but that's okay because his disciples were surprised too. And God is constantly keeping us guessing. I almost wish I could read John chapter 4 again for the first time, because now I know how it ends. And it would have been cool if I could have kind of you know, wiped your memory. And don't you wish you could see Shawshank Redemption again for the first time? Wouldn't it be amazing just to see Andy Dufresne crawl through the sewer, to hear Morgan Freeman narrate the, the life of of Tim Robbins again, just for the first time. It's still good, but I wish I kind of wish I could see it because I didn't see that coming the first time. Have you ever been watching a movie and you just thought you knew exactly where it was going to go, but then you know, out of nowhere? It, 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 I remember the first time I saw A Beautiful Mind. Did you see that movie? And I remember the first time I saw it, it messed with my mind. I did not see that coming. Have you ever been going through your life, going through your day, just minding your own business like the disciples trying to go get a burger, and all of a sudden, God disrupts your expectation of how your day was supposed to go, and sometimes God doesn't even let you know it's him doing it? Now, every disruption is not recognized as divine because the disciples had no idea what he wanted. They still thought he wanted Chick-fil-A closed on Sundays, but they didn't know he was doing something much bigger than a number one. He was doing something much bigger than a drive through And don't you know that God has scripted a much bigger arc for your life than how you feel this week? See, we never know. Any given day, any given day, we never know how. Any, any given day, we wake up and we never expect. It's never, the, it's never the things you expect that set your life in a different direction. Have you noticed this? It's never the things you expect. When you came to that lunch and you sang me that song, and then you never knew that we'd be writing songs for Elevation Worship, you were just coming to the lunch. You were just a new staff member. It's just the little things, but you came to the lunch, and you were one of the first 12 in there. And I said, who are you? And you said, I me. And I said, what do you do? You said, I sing. I just sing me a song. And you had a song, but you didn't know when you woke up that morning. You never know. See, that's why we have to continue to approach each day like it is the day that the Lord has made, because you never know. You never know. That woman didn't know she was about to meet her maker. She didn't know that she was about to meet a man who could not only tell her everything that she had done, but could show her what was within her that others did not see. Plot twist. You came to get water, but you're about to meet the well. Plot twist. Plot twist. You accidentally clicked on this YouTube channel, but you're about to get a word from, from God. You accidentally… I'm telling you, it never ceases to amaze me the way that God kind of sets things up and just about when you think I mean it's noon it's the hottest part of the day there's nobody around nobody's expecting it Jesus isn't supposed to even be talking to this woman as a rabbi and just when she expected it the least she received the greatest revelation of her life 
Now, for me on Father's Day, my dad was crazy in a, in a good way, in a bad way. It's like, and my relationship with my dad was really, really great, and it was really complicated. And uh, when he was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, and he realized that he would die, but we didn't have an exact time frame for it. Uh, some really bizarre events transpired in our house. And I don't like to talk about all of it because it's not completely my story to share, but even uh, within my mom's decision to forgive him for some things that he did during that period, there was a little while. And I was just reflecting on this for Father's Day because me and Graham were throwing the baseball, and you know, you connect all of that, like to when I was 12 and my dad throwing the baseball, but then also I connected it to when I was uh, 32. And we weren't even on speaking terms. And how one Father's Day I uh, hadn't spoken to him in months, and every time we would speak, it would get into a shouting match. And I don't think I had the wisdom to know how to relate to him through his pain. And he was, and he was being a jerk. I mean, I'm put that on the record because you know he's in heaven now. He made it in, but he was being a jerk, and I was probably a little immature as well. And it put us in a in a, in a weird spot. And. Do you remember where we were coming from? Was it, was it Florida, and we were coming on Father's Day, and I asked you to drive, and I made the list, and I said, I'm going to write a list of you know, 32 things that I remember from my dad that are good, and, uh, and, and let's take it by his house. And, and we stopped by, and, and uh, I won't tell the full story now. Many of you have heard me tell it before how I kind of shoved the list at him with a bad attitude. Happy Father's Day! You know? And it opened a door, and uh, really through my mom's uh, grace and compassion and forgiveness, I, I was able to be a part of his life, like he was a part of mine as a boy in the very last days. But, but what I wanted to tell you about, and I don't know who this is for because I didn't want to preach a message just for fathers, but on Father's Day, it, it got me thinking about the plot twists of our life and how important it is that we be attuned to what the Holy Spirit is doing in us because we never know. Because I was, I was preaching in 2013 on a series called The Expectation Gap. I should probably pull that one back out because that's where we're living right now, the, the gap between what you expect and what you experience. And, and listen to this, Lucius. I don't know if you've heard this story or not before, but it's the craziest story uh, maybe that I've ever experienced because I preach the 9:30 at Elevation Blakeney, and I usually preach the 11:30. And we were about to go on our family vacation for June, and something told me to just uh, instead of preaching the 11:30 to run the sermon back. And you know, I don't I don't go with every idea that I had and just call it the Holy Spirit. I'd be in prison if I did that. <laughs> because sometimes I think some really crazy thoughts, and some days I'd never get out of bed if I just went with what I felt. So I'm not one of those guys, but I just felt it. It was like you need to you need to just play the thing back. And I thought, you know, again, I'm arguing with God. You know? Like, you're not supposed to go through Samaria, Jesus. We don't do that. I'm like, well, God, I'm going on a vacation for a few weeks. I'm about to get a break. I don't need a break at eleven thirty. So I'll just preach that and then I'll get a break. But something told me to leave. As I was leaving, um, something told me to stop by and see my dad and my mom. And when I walked in, my dad was so surprised. In fact, he was just completely confused because his uh, disease had progressed to the point where he had very little movement, and my mom was kind of doing everything for him, and hospice was involved. But uh, his mind was still very sharp. But he had his iPad out. And he was watching, he was about to watch the 11:30 service of Elevation Church. Sorry, worship experience, we call it. And just as on the iPad I was coming on stage, I was walking in his house. And he went, <laughs> you know, he, he couldn't move his head around too much, but he looked back at the iPad and looked at me and looked at the iPad, and he said, How are you? What, here, you're here, but you're there, but you're here. How are you? Who's, who's preaching if you're there? I said, Dad. I said, I um, decided I, I just decided to come over and see you, and they're going to run back to 9:30, and I'm going to watch myself preach with you. 
because one of the things that he had asked me for when we were not speaking to one another, just, just before we stopped speaking to one another, he had asked me if I could show him how much he meant to me by canceling something that was important to show him that he was more important. And I thought, well, that's childish. Of course I care for you. I mean, look at all I try to do for you, and I'm a good son, and this and that. I'm a good, good son. That's who I am. He wasn't having it. And when I walked in, I realized this is that moment for me to be with him. And I sat on the edge of the bed, and he watched the sermon. And it's really awkward watching yourself preach. It's painful. I, I don't like to do it, but I did it. And when I finished and walked off the stage, I promise you I'm going to go back to John 4 in a minute. But when I walked off the stage, my dad said, "Preacher man gone. Out the back door. Time for Hubatka." Cuz Larry Hubatka would come out and do the clothes and I'd go this way and Larry Hubatka would go that way. And I hugged him and I said, "I love you. I'll see you when we get back from vacation." And my mom called me at 1 a.m. and said, "Your dad only has hours to live." He's not speaking. You need to get here quick. And we got there in the middle of the night, and uh, we sang his favorite hymns. And then I ran out of hymns, and I started singing CCR. And I ran out of classic rock songs, and we sang, and we sat with him, and we, and we sat with him. And I was with him when he breathed his last breath. But I told you that because you never know. That's why I told you that. Because you never know. You must go through some area. And this woman who's just coming to get water finds out that while she's trying to fill her jar, God is trying to fill her. And she becomes the first evangelist to the Samaritans in the time of the ministry of Jesus. Plot twist. Plot twist. But that's not really what I wanted to preach to you about today. What really got my attention for Father's Day was in verse 5. Because verse 5 says, So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Near the plot. Near the See, when I read that verse, I realized this is generational. I mean, of all the sermons that I have heard preached about this woman who had five husbands and she's living with the six and you know, she's loose and she's thirsty and she I realized that this did not start with her. I realized that the conflict between the Samaritans and the Jews did not start in John chapter four. And even the phrase it said on the plot of ground, and why would John who only had so many chapters to tell, only 21 chapters to tell us who Jesus was, his glory, full of grace and truth. He only has so much room, and he stops to tell us that it happened. I mean, I, I know about the woman. I know about her past. I know about her history. I know that Jesus taught her that they that worship the Father must worship in spirit and truth. Then I know it's not about whether you worship on this mountain or that mountain. I've read all of that, but I never took the time to realize that it was near the plot of ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Now do you see why I called you together early? Because it took me all the way back to remember that he called a man named Abram out of Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram was too old to have children. Plot twist, you're about to have a baby. His wife's womb was as good as dead. Plot twist. God can bring forth a fruitful situation from a barren womb. And then there's the God of Abraham, Isaac, 
and Jacob. It wasn't even supposed to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was supposed to be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But plot twist, just about the time you think you know what God is going to do. I love the story because Jacob got blessed out of order. And some of you are in a season of your life where you have told yourself that the story is never going to be any different. You are like this woman who came out to the well in the heat of the day to avoid the attention and the accusations and the condemnation of other people. And they have made up their mind about you and they have limited you. And they have put you in a box and they've said, Oh, you're just this or you're just that. But the barrier breaking God who stepped through 41 generations, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Esau. Esau was supposed to get the blessing, but God has a way of putting his right hand instead of his left hand. The right hand is the hand of blessing. The right hand is the hand of authority. It's called a plot twist. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.